Hey everyone, Ben here. If you're anything like me, you spend quite a bit of time lusting over the sim racing gear you see in the videos of high profile YouTubers and daydreaming of the kinds of improvements you might make to your own home setup. And today I'm going to talk about what I think is the most important bit of sim racing kit you can possibly buy, especially if you're on a budget. Let me know in the comments if you agree. For a long old while I raced using a wheel stand while sat on a settee in front of a big telly. Forza and the Codemasters F1 series were my go-to games and my Thrustmaster TX wheel and pedals, the very same wheelbase that I still use today, were my only bits of sim racing equipment. Eventually I snapped. I bought a playseat challenge on sale. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's sort of a racing deck chair. Foldable for easy storage, which at the time was a big plus, but capable of mounting a wheelbase and pedals to it and immediately more substantial than a wheel stand and a settee. A year or two later I would bought a gaming PC and upgraded to a TR8 cockpit from Track Racer with an inbuilt monitor stand. I would invested in a 144Hz monitor, a sequential shifter from Iologs and most recently a butt kicker, a review of which will be coming soon. You can see a full breakdown of the gear that I use on the rig at the moment in the description of this video. And of course I've also since upgraded my sims from F1 to race room, iRacing and Assetto Corsa Competizione. So all in all I've spent quite a lot of money but I've broadly loved every second of getting immersed into the sim racing world. Yet of all of the things I've invested in so far the most important is the one that I haven't yet mentioned. For immersion but also crucially for speed, it isn't your rig or your steering wheel that matters most but your pedals. And the upgrade I made from the bog standard and truthfully fairly awful entry level pedals that came with my TX to the Thrustmaster TLCM pedals has transformed how I go sim racing. Before we get into what makes the difference when upgrading your pedals, if you're enjoying the video or if you find it helpful, please do remember to hit that like button and get subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of the sim racing content, races, guides and reviews we've got coming up. It's actually quite hard to remember just how bad my old pedals used to be, equivalent in many ways to an on off switch rather than inputs with travel and resistance. This made modulating the throttle and brakes very, very challenging. Attempting to ride the threshold of traction as you accelerate out of a corner or mastering a skill like trail braking were practically impossible. But more than anything it was impossible to be properly consistent as the pedals weren't providing the resistance to help you build up muscle memory for just how much pressure you needed to apply in different braking zones and exits. A fellow SCB community member Paul Martin often comments that you drive with your feet which can sound like a counterintuitive thing to say when you spend so much time clutching an expensive steering wheel with your hands to manoeuvre the car around the track, but in many ways Paul's absolutely spot on. Of course it cuts both ways, but what you do with your feet in terms of slowing the car down and getting on the gas does ultimately dictate how you can steer the car, get it rotated and gun it out of a corner. The key thing is the TLCM pedals provide a closer simulation to braking in real life thanks to the fact that they feature a load cell brake. Without getting all of the way into the technicalities, a load cell operates on the basis of pressure applied to the brake rather than just the amount of travel in the pedal. In doing so it allows you to be far more precise in your braking and push your virtual car harder than you otherwise would be able to. Making the switch at first was definitely weird. It was like learning to drive all over again. Slowly but surely though things started to come together and I was able to start braking later, accelerating earlier and overall being way way more consistent lap to lap than I had ever been before. And it's that consistency which is the single biggest benefit. In my experience races are rarely won, especially online, through daring overtakes or last ditch moves. Good results come by being able to be more consistent than the other drivers that you're racing against. Plus as an added benefit because the TLCM pedals are made of metal, feel nice and heavy and look cool, they also bring with them a big immersion factor too. As with all aspects of sim racing there's often a chunky price to pay for the very best equipment. I have not tested all of the kinds of pedal sets in the market, in fact I've only ever had the experience of using the original TX pedals and the TLCMs. Quite clearly 
the performance of the TLCMs won't match those at the very high end of the market. But then I don't really think they need to. This after all is a video about operating on a budget and the quality gap between an entry level set of pedals and the TLCM is still absolutely vast. Notwithstanding the pandemic has played havoc with the price and availability of sim racing gear, and if you're in the UK you now also have import charges to think about too, you can expect to pay in the region of 170 to 200 pounds for the TLCM pedals. If you're in the Fanatec ecosystem, the CSL Elite pedals with clutch and load cell are potentially in the same bracket, and the Club Sport pedals, which come with a bunch of fancy features, are more like 500 to 600 pounds. Now considering upgrading your wheelbase into the mid-market can often cost £500 or more and wheel rims themselves often cost anywhere between £200 and £600, £200 for a set of pedals which are virtually guaranteed not just to look and feel good but actually deliver lap time in races is surely a good deal, right? If you're on a sim racing budget, without a shadow of a doubt this is where I would start upgrading. One final note though, make sure you have a good setup to secure the pedals. The flip side of having pedals that respond to pressure is you'll find yourself stamping on the brakes in certain scenarios and you really don't want them to go flying across the room when you do. So there you go guys, if you're on a budget my advice is to try and resist the flashier gear in the first instance, the ruinously expensive wheel rims and the gadgets. Focus on the thing that stands to improve the actual experience of sim racing the most, and that for me is having more confidence in what's going on under your feet. I hope you found the video helpful, let me know in the comments what your favourite bits of sim racing gear are, and I'll see you on the next one.